Copper is an element that many of us in the reef hobby are familiar with. Atomic number 29, in its pure form, is a recognizable orange metal. Though I'd be surprised if you might see it like that in your reef tank. Many people add it as a treatment for ick or another disease in their fish, but you're far more likely to run into copper compounds in your aquariums. Those compounds are often invisible in solution. A tiny amount of copper actually has quite a big effect, but a higher concentration of it will give it maybe a nice blue-greenish kind of color. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this video is all about copper. What is a safe level of copper in your reef tank? How does copper affect the coral? What makes it so bad? What test kits are going to work to test for copper? Well, let's dive in and find out. So, what is a safe level of copper? Well, unless you're using a Triton kit or another ICP style test on your tank, there really is no safe level of copper. Most home test kits are only going to be testing in the parts per million, maybe down into the high parts per billion, and even one part per million is way too much for most coral to handle, or really any coral to handle. If you are using an ICP test kit though, then maybe you might get like one or two parts per billion, and you could watch that with caution, but really even those tests should not be detecting any copper. So if you see any copper at all, it's likely to be causing issues, and those issues tend to build up over time. You should never intentionally add copper to your reef tank. If you do need to use it to medicate a fish, or maybe to get rid of ick or something like that, you have to do the medication in a different tank. That's a whole different topic though, so for this video, I'll suffice to say that you should just never add copper, or anything containing copper, to your reef tank. Even without coral, copper can slowly leach out of live rock, or anything porous over time, and so live rock or anything that's porous that is in a tank with copper should never be used in another tank with coral. That's not to say that coral doesn't need any copper at all. Actually, all living things need tiny amounts of copper just for their normal biological processes. For instance, copper is important in the creation of a compound called elastin. That's the compound that makes your skin and other tissues stretchy so you can open your fingers. Coral, cnidarians, they have elastin as well. They also have collagen. That's an important protein found in your body as well. This level of copper is going to be all but undetectable in our tanks, though. And it really is provided by the fish and coral food that you're going to add, or maybe in your water changes. Because your tap water, even your RODI water, probably has tiny bits of contamination in it. So, what does copper actually do to coral if you did add it? Well, in short, it kills it. But how? To answer this, I turned to a research library, where I found a paper published back in 2010 titled Subcellular Damage by Copper in the Cnidarian Zoanthus Robustus. The paper is linked down below in the description if you want to check it out. It's pretty neat. I'd recommend it. The researchers chose zoanthids to study because they're essentially just a bigger version of a standard coral polyp. Overall, you could think of zoanthids as having the same morphology as those tiny polyps that you see on your Acropora. But since it's much bigger, you can see the changes in damage a lot easier. At a very basic level, excess copper in the water can be damaging because it helps in the production of hydroxyl radicals, which go on to hurt all sorts of things inside the coral. Now, coral do have some capacity to rid themselves of those free radicals, but they can only do so much. Copper overwhelms that capacity, leading to all sorts of damage in things like amino acids, even the DNA itself. Copper can actually also block the sites that use or that coral use to export those compounds. So even if coral is able to bind up those free radicals, it can't remove them from its tissue. In a study of Pocillophora coral, there was actually a retraction of polyps and a loss of tissue after just 14 days of exposure to 50 parts per billion copper. Another coral in a different study was exposed to copper for 15 days, and then they used a toothbrush to scrub off some tissue. The exposed, the copper exposed corals died, while the controlled corals, which didn't get any exposure to copper, or to copper, recovered. So looking at the tissue that was actually removed in that test, they found oxidative damage, and those free hydroxyl ions that we we're talking about were causing damage at a sort of invisible subcellular level. After exposing the research zoanthids to 20, 40, 60, or 110 micrograms per liter of copper, and that's almost directly convertible into parts per billion, by the way. The zoanthids contracted, 
and they were noticeably less flexible and harder to cut compared to the control polyps. Their bases, where they grab onto the rock, were also filled with algae that normally wouldn't be present there. The copper broke some kind of barrier or membrane inside the polyp that would normally prevent that algae from reaching the base of the polyp. Looking at the zoanthids under a microscope, they found that the walls of the polyp were actually much thicker after exposure to even 20 parts per billion copper over about 9 to 11 days. The copper caused the zoanthids to produce much more collagen and that thickened the walls and also made them less flexible. The thickening also reduced the internal space that the coral could use for food and water flow and all that kind of stuff that's important for its life. Coral is not the only ocean animal that suffers from collagen issues after exposure to copper. Sponges have been found to actually have the same thing happen. After placing a sponge in some contaminated sediment in the ocean and letting it grow over time, its tissues thickened leading to less water being able to flow through the sponge. And of course, since sponges rely on filtering water and moving the water through its tissues, that is bad news for the sponge. In fact, the same thing can actually happen to you. No, not water problems and things like that, but chewing on areca nuts, also called betel nuts, forgive my pronunciation, that leads to increased levels of collagen in the tissues of your mouth. In extreme cases, it can actually get tough enough to prevent you from even being able to open your mouth at all because you can't stretch your lips anymore. That's called oral submucous fibrosis, and it can actually lead to mouth cancer. There are a few different ways to test for copper, and the way you test for copper actually depends on the type of copper compound that you want to find. An ICP test is going to be the most accurate at the very low end. And so if you're not dosing copper as a medication or something like that, then an ICP test is probably going to be your best bet for detecting very low levels of copper reliably. If you're dosing cuprion or cupramine, then the test kits that you need to use are either the Seachem or the Salford test kits. If you're using copper safe or copper power, you need to use the API test kits instead because there's different copper compounds in use throughout those products. Copper is actually a really interesting element in reef tanks. It's necessary for life, but at just a tiny bit higher concentration, it leads to all those free radicals and overproduction of collagen and toughens the coral's tissue and blocks the normal life processes that our coral needs to be able to perform in order to survive. Those effects are additive, and we don't really know if they would return back to normal after the copper is removed. Some of the changes, like the damage to the DNA, could very well be permanent, Another reason to keep copper far away from your coral. Even if a level of copper isn't outright lethal and doesn't just immediately kill your coral, there is still damage being caused. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Take a moment to subscribe, be kind to each other, stay safe, get your vaccine if it's available to you, and have a fantastic day. Bye.